As I've said before, the SAT really likes asking about the number of solutions, and here, instead of having two lines, which I think is much easier, we have a quadratic equation, and we talk about solutions, um, or, yeah, when we talk about solutions, we're talking about x-intercepts. I think, I think that's one annoying thing about this, is uh, the way that most of us are going to think about this, because it's set equal to zero, what they're really asking for is if we just graphed this normally, how many x-intercepts would it have? Where is y equal to zero? So there is an algebra way to do this, which I will show you. But since it's a new test, maybe some new strategies are better for people. So let me throw it out there. One thing we could do, since this question is multiple choice, is we could just create four different quadratic equations, substituting all these answers in for B and seeing what we get. So I wouldn't have put them all on the on the thing at once, but here I did just to show you. Here are my four um, choices, right? Negative 91, we can see that that is in choice or in line A there. Negative 80, 5, 40, all of the rest of the equation is the same because that's constant. And then I switched out the Y or the zero for a Y, okay? And I did that because if I put it as a zero, I would just get kind of straight vertical lines. And I could still use that to figure out the answer, but I think it's more confusing. So I just put it as a Y so that I can really make this connection that what they're asking for is if we had a normal quadratic equation where we're trying to figure out how many times it crossed the X axis, how many solutions does it have? And so we can see that that blue one is the one that has more than one, right? So the black and the purple have no solutions. They're not crossing, so I'm gonna get rid of those. The green is, it looks like it's just touching it. We can zoom, we can kind of see, maybe it's going beyond it, it's hard to tell, but it looks like, yes, it's only hitting it in one spot. So, ugh, this is why I hate this new Desmos thing. It's too hard to use sometimes. There we go, there we go. So the green is just touching it once. It's the blue that has more than one solution. It has one here at 0.3721, and here at 1.0498. So those are the two x-intercepts of this graph, and so there you go, A would be our answer. Um, if that is confusing to you, we do have an algebra way to do this that, that might be easier, honestly. Um, here's what that would entail. When we are trying to find the number of solutions to a quadratic, we are going to use the discriminant, which is a, a piece of the quadratic formula that tells us the number of solutions it is b squared minus 4ac. And depending on what that value is, we know the number of solutions. So if that uh, value is um, less than zero, if it's a negative number, we have no solutions. If it is equal to zero, we have exactly one solution. But what we want is more than one solution, so we want this value to be greater than zero. And we have values for b a and C because we have an, a quadratic kind of written in standard form. So the B is the unknown, so we'll leave that as, as B. Uh, the A is 64 and the C is 25. And when we plug in, we see now we have a, a, an ability to solve for B. So I would use the calculator for this. I'm not going to do 4 times 64 times 25 in my head. So 4 times 64 times 25 is 6400. So b squared minus 6,400 is greater than zero. So b squared is greater than, we could add the 6,400 over. And this is where it gets a little annoying. Um, if we just kind of naturally take the square root of each side, the square root of 6,400 is 80. So, oh, and I switched something I shouldn't have. We should say that b is greater than 80. Now, we don't have an answer that has b as greater than 80, right? We have a negative 80, but we don't have a greater than 80. So why is a the answer then? What's going on? Well, of course, there's a little extra twist here, is that I just took a square root of a number, and you're, you're not really supposed to do stuff like this. Uh, what we really should have done is factored and that would have allowed us to get a positive and a negative value. The short of it is, in this particular case, because we're trying to solve for b, b could be positive or it could be negative, so when I take that square root, I need to create two separate inequalities. Either b is greater than 80, 
or b is less than negative 80. And now, negative 91 fits. If it were for that, I would say that the discriminant method here is definitely easier than graphing. I think it, it just kind of, as long as, long as we have it memorized, it, it kind of, the algebra isn't so bad. But I'm worried about that negative. And so if we are trying to figure out the best way that we want to solve these things in the future, uh, maybe keep in mind that the twists like this can happen and understand how this would look on a graph and you might be able to kind of find the best situation, the best strategy for each situation. It might not be one size fits all is what I'm saying. So we have the calculator, we're gonna use it in lots of situations, but we also have algebra and basically a lot of the SAT is gonna come down to deciding calculator, algebra, which one's better in the circumstances.